Good morning. Uh, can you go from zero to CNCing in just one day? With a sophisticated machine and software in your backyard shed. With little or no experience. I don't know, let's rewind and take a look. Uh, my name is Dainsey and I have a thing to unbox. There's something wrong with the door. Hang on. Let me say this part right up front. I was very apprehensive to actually accept this machine. Not because I don't like shiny things, more that I was not emotionally ready for the perceived learning curve that comes along with learning a CNC. Let alone the daunting task of actually assembling these apparatus of science, maths, and shiny aluminium things. I've been following many people and companies and I watch how they get their CNCs, heaps of boxes, have to put them all together, all that time and effort to not only get it assembled, but operationally working. So at this point, I'm still a little bit worried about my precious time in the shit. Hey, I found a couple more screws. Check out all that plywood that I've got with this box. <laughs> and it comes with a pallet. With the box open, a fair bit of my apprehension, my time apprehension, goes out the door. This shiny purple thing is fully assembled and tested. And all the cords and wiring are already plugged in, ready to go. This is the dilemma right now. This is 1200 by 1200. Four feet by four feet. I'm a little over committed for space. I think I'm just gonna use the bench. I need to basically get this thing operational and then figure out all the bits and pieces in here. <laughs> Quick disclaimer. I did not do all the things in this video in one calendar day. I count my time out here in the shed as in shed days. Sometimes that's one hour, sometimes that's a couple of hours, or it is whatever. However, when I add up the following, unboxing, plugging in, downloading the software, watching several videos on the CNC 3D channel, couple of phone calls today, because I did zero research, surfacing the spoil board twice, tramming, probing, and carving my first project. That equals about one day. Shelby, Shelby. All right, the moment of truth, does it fit? Oh, check it out, perfect. Okay, uh, now we wait for Dan, because I'm not gonna drop this machine. If you have seen my shit, you are probably wondering where the hell I'm going to put this thing. I am also wondering this. That is a future Dainsy problem. Just quickly, do you love whatever they call this sort of aluminium that's a beautiful color? The engineering is way beyond my brain. It's a beautiful thing. Once Dan had helped me get the CNC into the shed, all I had to do was move all the important bits off the spoil board and plug in the power cord. How yeah, good, grab a laptop, plug it in, and away we go. So, step one was to unbox and move to the shed. Plug in the power, download the software, and connect to Wi-Fi. I found the experience actually very enjoyable because I didn't do it all in one day. I watched a few videos one day, I unboxed on another, watched a few videos, flicked through the instruction manual, plugged it in, a few days later, watched the videos again, did a spool board surfacing, spotted my punter error, did another spool board surfacing, a few days later, did some tramming and another spool board surfacing, watched a video on easel, designed a simple project following the CNC 3D video, import the G-code, into the commander software and carved my first thing. Happy day. Happy days. So I just figured out what the Mentos are for. You're gonna wanna be chewing on one of those when you press the button for the first time, especially if you're very new to this like I am. <laughs> Woo! So next step is to check square, believe it or not. Check gantry square.
Bloody inches. She'll be. Step two, take the spindle for a lap around the block. Every time you turn the machine on, fire it up, press home so it knows where it is. I need to dig in to find some settings. I want to move this thing faster than whatever it's moving, 20 mil. So let me try and remember uh, where that magic is happening. Stand by. It turns out it's, uh, it's right here. <laughs> right under my nose. Let's go 500 doodads. Hit the Y. Oh, it's Step 2.5, introduce CNC 3D. They are an Aussie company based on the Gold Coast and they have very kindly partnered up with me and provided this very large box of goodies. This was a company that was started in 2017 because there was a lack of affordable CNC options. Dave and the team turned an obsession into a reality and now they have a fantastic company supplying these beautifully built solid CNC machines all around the world. Made and assembled here in Australia. How cool is that? Step three, surfacing the spoil board. I've just been away for several days, haven't touched this thing, so I'm just turning it all on, seeing what I actually remember. It's all connected up to the Wi-Fi, things aren't flashing at me. It still all seems pretty simple. Surfacing the spoil board is actually a great first step or first project. We obviously want a perfectly flat, square and parallel, perpendicular to the spindle surface for all future projects. What makes the spoil board surfacing pretty much a foolproof process is the team at CNC 3D have built in a spoil board surfacing G-code generator. They've done the hard work for you. I recommend you just watch the surfacing video and that is actually gonna help you just get started on your very first project. Foolproof instructions, however, does not include counting for making rookie errors. I actually screwed into the subframe, raising the MDF in one corner. Initially, I just thought, well, this surface isn't level and it's gonna take several passes until I actually spotted my mistake. Just quickly jumping ahead to step seven. Step seven, go and do other things while your CNC is working in the background for you. I'll get back to step seven. It's all too exciting. Step six, design and carve your first project. Designing your first project is actually very simple. All you need to do is download a piece of software like Easel. This is where you can design things I followed the steps on the CNC 3D's videos. This walked me through easel design basics, choosing the bits, feeds and speeds, and how to export the G-code file that you then import into the Commander software. And away you go. Step five, probing.
Step four, tramming. I do this step at the end of all the other steps. Tramming. Now, I was going to blow this step off as it actually seemed all too hard. However, it isn't. Once you watch a quick video or see the process, it is just a simple jig put into the spindle, which lets you check whether the X and Y axis are actually perpendicular to the surface. The adjustments are actually really easy to make and it is well worth it so you get a nice, flat, beautiful bottom in your pockets or on your projects. Take a few moments, make the jig, do the tramming, happy day. Step eight, ask you to subscribe to my channel and also CNC 3D and share this video with your mates. Step nine, say catch you later and give a double thumbs up. Yeah.